Hello! We have two stories today where love is blind. In fact, it's anything but. It misses nothing and gives nothing extra. Is that love? Sounds more like a bank appointment. Our first story has a woman who keeps better score than a FIFA ref, but as luck would have it, they're both open to bribery. Story one. We've been together one year. I cook dinner for us pretty regularly. I bring the groceries over to her place and cook, and that's it. When she invites me over and cooks for me, she always asks me to contribute to half of the meal cost or bring half the groceries. One time I brought the groceries over, but didn't have soy sauce. She bought some and was like, can you send me $3 for the soy sauce? I refused because I thought it was odd to ask that. Like soy sauce is just a basic condiment. And besides, I was already bringing the groceries. She was kind of irked when I refused and didn't really see how it was fair. I have obliged with these requests in the past without too much thought, but suddenly something hit me. I can't help but think she is treating me in a very transactional way. I see where she's coming from. Splitting stuff is obviously fair. What do you do when your partner wants to treat your relationship this 50-50 way? I can't help but feel it's odd. Relevant comments. Mobile Prune said, that is odd, especially considering that you don't act the same, but she can say she does it because you do or something. Have you sat and had a conversation with her about it? Does she have money problems or grew up with money problems that she feels she needs to try to hold on to every cent? If you end up living together, how will those finances work if she can't even buy a sauce without turning it into a financial transaction between you? OP replied, no money problems that I'm aware of until recently her rent was paid by her parents and she's always worked part-time or full-time and earned more than I am. I have noticed that she complains about paying for things that don't bring value to her fines, repairs, etc. Flag, red flag, red flag. Maybe she wants the most possible money going towards her fun stuff and tries to minimize her expenses. Update. I made a post two days ago about the soy sauce situation with my girlfriend. I decided to bring it up with her, but we'll get to that. First, I realized that groceries aren't the only thing subject to the nickel and diming mindset and lack of generosity. Examples? She counts favors with people, even close family in that she always accepts things in return. However, she doesn't apply this principle in reverse. I notice I've done a lot for her, taking care of her dog, moving furniture, helping her rehearse a job interview, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All things I've gladly done and not thought twice about because she's my partner and I love her, the way relationships should be. Yet I actually can't think of one time she has done something to help me, not one. Once I asked her to help me move furniture, she had nothing on that day, but didn't feel like it and stayed home. Anyway, I brought this up with her. I asked, why do you hold back from being generous and selfless? And she replied, because no one has ever done anything for me. I brought up the times I've helped her and she changed to, well, until you came along, no one did anything for me. I then asked, how would you describe the ways you show me love and affection? And she got annoyed that I asked that, but she couldn't come up with a single thing. Except for attacking me, she proceeded to say, I buy you things, but you hate them. I try and do things for you, but you don't want me to. These things are both completely untrue. For clarification, the past year she has bought me two presents and I love and use them both. And she is definitely aware of that. She conveniently finds ways to make herself the victim and dodge responsibility. I told her she needs to fix this and also start showing some generosity in the relationship or I'm out. Anyway, time passed and she messaged me this morning saying she is sorry I feel this way. She said she wants to improve. Then she asked, do you want to make it work? Yet she hasn't told me how it is precisely that she plans on making it work. Going to a therapist, planning to reciprocate the love back, those kinds of things. I have a feeling that making it work is going to require a god awful amount of effort and probably lead to stress and emotional pain for both of us. I don't know if I can go through that, but of course there's the possibility that we both come out of it stronger. Update two. I appreciate all the responses to this post. It's helped me so much to write to a group of strangers who are completely detached from the situation. Girlfriend and I are no longer together. Hallelujah. I was just going to respond this to a comment saying to just end it and tell her I don't want to put in the work. I thought I'd leave it here instead. By telling her I don't want to make it work, it would have, in her mind, absolved her of any responsibility for the ending of the relationship. She could feel like the victim, again, because I didn't want to put in the effort. I instead told her that she has deeply rooted character flaws and that the way she treated me is a form of gaslighting. 
It was hard to say that. I basically broke down in her arms. She broke down too. She can't even recognize what the issue is, so I don't think she can change. And I have too much on my plate right now to walk her through all of this. She actually understood that and apologized, properly. It's so frustrating. I still love everything else about her, and at times I saw us having a life together. But she still doesn't even know what she's doing. She chalked it up to us thinking differently. If she had just said, I'm sorry for treating you like that. It was so wrong. I will do everything I can to change. I would have been ecstatic, and it would have probably saved the relationship. In the comments, Make Ski said, Yeah, the amount of work it would have taken just to get her to actually self-realize would have been Herculean. Shrimp Linko added, Pretty much guaranteed that she'd see this as just yet another thing that she needs to be repaid for. In response to, she chalked it up to us thinking differently. Temp UN said, that's fine if she wants to count all the favors she does for OP as well as all the favors he does for her, but she only tracks what she is owed and none of what she owes. Transactional relationships are already exhausting. I can't imagine being in one where all of my contributions are worthless. Bolo Nomadic said, I'm still stuck on the soy sauce. One meal doesn't equate to half a bottle of soy sauce per person. So he can give her 10 cents for a small amount of soy sauce. Just kidding. He shouldn't give her any money, but I can't stop thinking about it. Squishabelle added, Imagine giving her $3 and then pouring half of the bottle into one you brought with you. Right in front of her. Yes, this. <laughs> Someone else added, Or just dump half of it down the drain while maintaining eye contact. Assert that dominance. <laughs> Is OP new to Reddit? Sorry, maybe that's a bit harsh. I really think he needs to tread lightly here, though. He's all rolling down the hill yelling, as you wish. And Princess here is like, this is too hot. This is too cold. You owe me five cents. I mean, thinking differently is one way of describing this mismatch, I guess. And I have to say, OP's closing statement worries me a bit. It sounds like he might find himself in a similar web in the near future. I sure hope not. Our second story continues on the trend of transactional love with a shorter tale that packs a big punch. If you thought a scorekeeping girlfriend was bad, imagine that your whole family was an IRS audit and your mom was the investigating agent. And if you're thinking I'm exaggerating, you'd be wrong, because it's even worse. Story 2 Our household always revolved around money, even though my mom made more than enough money and we were not struggling by any means. She complained about every single thing she had to buy for us. Everything. Food. Clothes medical expenses, toys, laptops, and phones, school costs, everything. We always knew exactly how much we were costing her. We didn't dare ask for unnecessary things like leisure activities or expensive toys or hobby supplies. We started working very young and she manipulated and guilted us to give her all the money we earned to pay off what we owed. When I turned 18, she completely cut me off financially, but kindly offered to let me rent my bedroom out and sent me an invoice of every cent I've ever cost her, totaling over $700,000. She billed me for Christmas and birthday presents. She even billed me for her medical expenses for the pregnancy and delivery and wanted me to back pay rent to live in the house from birth. She did the same to my sister two years later when she turned 18. We were supposed to pay her back over time, starting the day we turned 18. Both of us were still dealing with a lot of internalized guilt from her constant manipulation, so we actually did pay for a while. Aside from necessary expenses, our entire paychecks were going to her. We rented our bedrooms in her house and she separated her food, cleaning supplies, cookware, and tableware, etc. from ours and charged us to use them. She generously included the use of the household appliances in our rent. It wasn't until I was 21 and my sister was 19 that enough people had told us this whole arrangement was unhinged that we finally snapped out of it. We moved out together and have stopped paying our mom or even contacting her at all. In the comments, Wasp said, Fair enough. Now invoice her for life costs going forward since she birthed you without your consent. <laughs> Mike added, at a minimum, send her the therapist bills. Someone said, I think she owes you every penny you paid her back. I would try and recover it through legal representation. OP replied, That's not a fight I'd win. My mom is a lawyer. Prestigious Blue Jay replied, You'd win just by the sheer fact that she'd have to explain to friends, peers, colleagues, family, that you were trying to recover the money she charged you for your life. Holy snickerdoodle. 
This one gives me the creepy crawlies. I mean, talk about making your kids feel like an unwanted burden for their whole upbringing. I wonder if she charged billable hours for story reading and drives to school, because $700,000 is a pretty hefty price tag. And is this something that OP's mom got from her parents? Or is it her own lovely tradition that she's trying to start? She's like an evil stepmom out of a fairy tale, but oh wait, drop the step. Thank goodness OP and her sister have each other. At least they can start fresh, or somewhat fresh. I wish them the very best. And that's it for today. Until next time, shine bright, Starlight. Yahoo! If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.